Inside this building behind me are some of the finest mines in the entire country, and they're busy making, of all things, ice cream. But these scientists are also keen amateur archaeologists with another passion. And it's over there. It's this field, because this is no ordinary field. It's full of all this stuff. Lots of 2,000-year-old bits of Roman brick, tile and masonry. And look at all this lot. We've got brooches, rings, a pin, belt buckle, lovely piece of Roman gold. Clearly, whoever lived here was very important and wealthy. But who was it? Well, this time, we've got a whole week to find out. Only joking, as usual, three days. We're here, next to a science park on the Colworth Estate in rural Bedfordshire. This field is the local archaeological society's pride and joy, because it's stacked with Roman finds, like this fabulous piece of gold jewellery. But what's odd is that, as far as I know, we're miles from any Roman road. Why stick a massive Roman house here in the middle of nowhere? To try and answer that, we're going to need all the brains we can muster. Lloyd, you asked us here, didn't you? That's correct, Tony. And you work in that science park? I do indeed. What do you do? I'm an ice cream scientist. What does that involve? Well, for me, it involves working with the ingredients and the formulations, how we put together ice cream to deliver the properties that people want. So if I put my ice cream into a cone and the cone stays stiff even though the ice cream's melting, that's down to you? That's the sort of thing we work on, Tony, yes. You are a great man. What is it that you'd specifically like us to answer? What I'd specifically like you to answer is, is in relation to the Roman period. Who are the people who live here and how do they fit into the overall landscape? Do you reckon we can do that for him, Neil? Tall order, isn't it? I mean, it's, it looks like a very juicy sight, doesn't it? But, you know, what really interests me is, you know, why here? I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere, even in Roman time. What is it about this spot that leads Lloyd and all his colleagues to find those exciting finds? Doesn't everything about it say bog-standard Roman villa? No, far from it. I mean, but look at this aerial photograph. Here you've got this dark discoloration. That's the site of the villa house where Lloyd and his colleagues are finding all the artefacts. But it's set within this unusual ditched enclosure. And that's rather unusual. Why have a house inside an enclosure? John, this is a perfect site for geophys, isn't it? You can solve this. I'm sure we will, but the problem is the size. It's knowing exactly where to target. So we're going to go in with the mag first, try and find the footprint of the, the actual Roman villa building, if it is that, uh, and then take it from there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've got so much to do. We must get a trench in early on today. We just can't wait that much longer. Well, John shouldn't find it too difficult to locate the villa building. In fact, he can hardly miss it. For a start, we're not talking about a garden shed. Typically, Roman villas are massive structures with whole wings full of rooms and a very clear footprint. Then add on the odd luxury dining room with mosaics and painted wall plaster, central heating, even an ensuite bathhouse, and it's no wonder this field's full of rubble. Picking it up on Geophys should be a breeze. Look at all this lot. Over the last few years, the ice cream people and all the other volunteers have managed to glean over a tonne of Roman material off our field, which means that Helen and Philippa, who are in our incident room over here, the local cricket pavilion, have really got their work cut out. Bit of a treasure trove for you, isn't it? It is, yeah, and the first thing that strikes you when you begin to open a few bags is the high quality of the stuff from here. We've got a, a lovely spoon, which has got great white metal coating still intact, and then these horse harness mounts. Now, they're really heavy and chunky. They're really top-notch things. The brooches are absolutely fantastic too, and then the pièce de résistance is this gold piece of jewellery, very rare, which oh. I think is a link from a necklace. That's fantastic. But the other thing that hits me is how few objects there are, which I think is really very weird compared to the enormous amount of coins behind me. Philippa, you've got lots of coins. How many coins do you reckon you've got? I think about 400 at the moment, but I haven't looked at them all yet. What are you going to do with them? Well, I'm going to try and date them all, and then that should hopefully provide a chronology for the site. But you've already taken one out of its bag. What's that? Well, it's one of the earlier coins from the site, right. and it's an heiress of Julia Domna, who was the wife of Septimius Severus. And it's quite unusual to see empresses on coins. Would you have expected to have found quite so many coins on this site? No, definitely not. This is one of the biggest collections of coins from any site in Bedfordshire. 
if we're scratching our heads over the finds in the incident room, the picture isn't any clearer out on site. John, you can see from all the stone and Roman tile in the field, we're obviously standing on top of a Roman building. But what's the geophysics say? Well, look, we can't see clear wall lines, no. but, but look, this is the enclosure ditch that we're talking about. You can see the ditch clearly there. You can see the ditch clearly there in the magnetics. And between those ditches, we've got this mass of noise. Now, that has to be the building. Right. But as I say, you can't see clear wall lines. Sure. If you give us another half hour, we'll come in with resistance and radar, and that's far better for defining wall lines and foundations. You remember that massive building with a huge distinctive footprint that John couldn't miss? Well, he's missed it. And if the villa's proving elusive, Ben and Stuart are wondering why it would have been here in the first place. An interesting location, isn't it, the site? Because when you look at this map of Roman roads here, we've got Ermine Street, major Roman road, heading north, east of our site here. We've got Watling Street heading to the west. That It actually sits quite a long way from either, as if it's in the middle of nowhere. It's a bit <laughs> in between -y, isn't it? <laughs> I mean... Toaster here, significant Roman town, military origins. God Manchester, significant Roman town, military origins. Urchester, right up here. It's difficult to believe that anywhere could exist in this landscape without reference to these towns. <laughs> it, that's the thing that always fascinates me about the, the, the landscape. We get used to looking at big Roman motorways that were like Ermine Street and Watney Street bashing through the country and forget there's got to be networks of small roads connecting villas to the main road system and there they're really hard ones to, to spot. We're not quite sure why we can't find a villa and we're not quite sure why there would have been one here in the first place. We're on a roll. Meanwhile, John's completed his magnetic survey of our field and thrown radar and resistivity at it too. And looking at the results involves some strange ritual in the back of his Land Rover. What can you see under there, John? Not a lot at the moment. You mean not a lot? <laughs> Dumb. Looks like a Sudoku to me. We, we're going to be into ice cream making. <laughs> <laughs> nice piece. I mean, I look like a piece of contemporary art. You. <laughs> So we got no magnetic, no resistance, no radar. No, no, we've got magnetics. We've got lots of noise that goes with the, well, the supposed building. I think we put a trench into that magnetic noise. It sounds to me as though we want to go back to first principles, dig a yes, hole. Yes, I agree. This is truly bizarre. This field is stacked full of finds, and yet the geophysics can't find any trace of a big stone structure. I'm doubly baffled, because in spite of that, we seem to be opening a trench anyway. This is, for us, a test pit, really, so I think once we, we take this first one a bit steady... It almost looks like sort of hey. cobbling. You think it's almost like cobbled surface or something? It's damned hard, I know that. I mean, is that the, the line of the building supposed to be? Not far off. It's lunchtime on day one, and we've opened our first trench here in the middle of our site. This has got to be the most closely observed bit of field we've ever looked at on Time Team. We've had magnetometry on it, we've had resistivity, radar, and none of them seem to me to have come up with anything at all. So what do we do? We put in a trench anyway, and not just any old trench, a really, really long one. John, why have you put a trench in here? Desperation, panic, <laughs> No, boredom. not at all. You're right, we didn't get a clear building plan, but we still had all this noise in the magnetic and so we needed to investigate what's going on. And the trench has come up trumps. Absolutely. And the archaeology is good. I mean, you see, at this end here, it looks like we've got this big area of clay which we're thinking might well be the natural. And then somewhere along here, oblique to the actual trench, you can see we've got big lumps of bone, we've got rubble and stone. It's very, very dirty. There's black material. And it, it sort of dies out somewhere in here, but only somewhere. I'm not sure about that front end. So there is archaeology here? I mean, yes, there's archaeology in the trench, but what worries me, Tony, is it doesn't look like a monumental Roman building. So everything that Phil just said is wrong? Uh, I don't disagree with you, Phil, <laughs> but 
I don't see a building. I so see... it could be the geophysics is right. Well, well it yeah. couldn't really be wrong, could <laughs> it? Just have it, on it? <laughs> the main thing is whether or not there's a building there or not. We can see on the surface there is a spread of material. John has picked up some noise on the geophysics. What we've got to do is resolve what mm. that really means. Mm. We've got loads of people. They're virtually falling over each other. So what we do is dig another trench over there. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. We've got a very long trench here. So what do we need to do? Put in another trench. Yes. Yeah, Why? No, no, no. Totally escaped. <laughs> no, look, look. We've talked about the noise on the magnetics yeah. in the middle here. But if you remember, it's set within this ditched enclosure that extends all the way around the site. Now, the ditches show really well in the magnetics, and you can see at that point there an end to the ditch. So we need to get some dating out and see how it relates to what's here. This is madness. We may have a Roman villa, we might have a Roman settlement. So, what do we do? We found a ditch. Hooray, hooray, let's but dig it's the a, ditch. It's a good ditch, Tony. And what we know is the, the building isn't over there. It doesn't seem to be there. So it must be somewhere between the two. Now, I'm not panicking. I really am not panicking. But if it comes to it, we'll open another trench through here later on today. But, He's but panicking. <laughs> <laughs> He's He's definitely kind of <laughs> oh, there's something between there and there. Great, that's but time. That doesn't show on the geophysics <laughs> either. <laughs> Total mayhem. I thought we were here to dig a Roman villa, but instead we put in our first trench to investigate the noise on John's geophysics. And now we're opening a second trench to find the end of a ditch. Brilliant. And if that doesn't work, Neil's already thinking he may need to open a third trench between the other two. Genius. Well done, lads. Though he might not need to, because back in trench one, I think we've just got lucky. Yeah, I mean, it's one big roof tile, but it's absolutely fresh. I mean, this material has not been broken up by the plough. But that end, look. No, and that's, that's box flu, that isn't is it? That's the, yeah, that's your upper course, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's pretty clear we've got some really big roof tile. We've got underfloor heating system. Yeah. You know, we've obviously got a major Roman house here. Well, if we hadn't found something in a 10-metre long bit of trench, we'd have been in serious trouble. So, while the search for our grand Roman villa continues, over in trench two, Bridge is digging the exciting ditch that runs round our site. What have you got? There's potato these three um, eye, bits of iron here, and they look suspicious to me like hobnails from the bottom of boots. Yeah, you're right. They've got that, that curved over surface on the head, haven't they, that would stick out from the leather. But also found with them is all these little bits of bone. Now, yeah. And in fact, we've still got some in situ here with little bits of charcoal and burning and that kind of thing around here. Well, it could be a burial, couldn't it? Given we've got some hobnail boots, yeah. and, and I'm not saying that three hobnails make a boot. But they are a classic thing to find in a Roman burial, aren't they? They are. So maybe we've found exciting evidence of a Roman burial, or maybe just a boot. But it's not all good news, because in spite of the initial excitement in Trench 1, we can't find a structure. Plenty of broken roof tiles, but no villa. So Neil, who's definitely not panicking, has decided to open a third trench. It's going in between our first two trenches, where John's equipment registered a mass of noise that we're hoping indicates a central villa building. Back in Bridges Trench, where not half an hour ago we thought we might have a burial, the story's moved on. It's late, it's Neen Valley, Lower Neen Valley, so it's up that way and it's one of these sort of courseware types that they start making in a colour coat late on. And so that wouldn't be found with a burial? No, definitely not, definitely not. So no burial then. As you can see uh, over there, it's tea time. Everyone's looking pretty relaxed, but take a look at this. Nothing in that trench whatsoever. And over here, nothing in this trench either. Matt, what you got in your trench? Well, this looks very much like trench one over there. A stony spread on this side, ditch in the middle, and that's about it. So basically nothing? There's certainly no buildings, that's for sure. Aren't we lucky we've got thousands of pounds worth of geophysical equipment to confirm to us how much nothingness we've actually got? Oh dear me, it feels like we've gone two steps forward and three back today. We've had a couple of hobnails and a load of broken tiles. We haven't got a burial and we certainly haven't got a villa. As first days go, it's hardly been a triumph.
Lloyd, I feel that we're in the process of letting you down rather badly. I don't remember another time team where the auguries have been so good at the beginning and by the end of day one, we found virtually nothing. Well, we found some things, Tony, but it's not a fan of Roman Villa, have we? You know this field more than any of us. Do you think that we're digging in the wrong place? Well, one way in which I think we can help, Tony, is that we spend a lot of time walking this field systematically and we broke the field down into a series of grids. So the brighter colours are the areas where we've found the greatest density, in this case, of roof tile. Yeah? Yeah. Similarly, we've also got densities plotted out for the box flue tile. I know I'm very ignorant about these things, but aren't they all virtually in the same place? Pretty <laughs> much so. And where's that? Pretty much behind you, Tony. Behind the digger? Behind the digger. Away from where the trenches are? Precisely. Hey. <laughs> I mean, this is recording of the highest professional quality, Tony, and Lloyd's group now have really showed this area here, D5, almost like battleships, isn't it? That's where you should perhaps go and have a look now. So, who's going to find our Roman villa? Is it going to be our nationally celebrated archaeologist or Mr Whippy? We'll know tomorrow. Beginning of day two here at Colworth Park in Bedfordshire, where we're looking for some kind of Roman villa. Yesterday, we put in three trenches. We put in one along there, one around here, and a third there, and we found virtually nothing. But then a local enthusiast, Lloyd, who was the guy who brought us here in the first place, came up with another idea. He'd already field walked this entire field and he'd put all the information on a grid and there was one square of that grid, D5, where he'd had more Roman finds than anywhere else and that D5 grid was just behind our big digger. So, are we going to dig it? Well, yes, we are. But the good news is we're already doing it. Look, we've actually plotted out the finds relative to our trench and with scientific precision, our trench is already actually in D5. So we're still in D5 here? Yes, we are. But D5 then is where we found absolutely nothing. I wish you would stop saying absolutely nothing. We were digging for a day, we've got good archaeology. Well, we haven't got a flipping villa, <laughs> have we? Are you satisfied, John, that this is where we should be digging? Yes, definitely. Henry's now sorted out where the finds concentration was and he's pinpointed it accurately and the trench covers that as well. I am totally confident that this is the hot spot if we just get on, take the trench back, come back in half an hour, Tony, then we can talk again. Come on, baby. Come to Mama. Come to Mama. <laughs> so, we're now extending trench three here to cover the area where Lloyd and his colleagues had recorded the highest concentration of finds. This does feel like we've got something under here, doesn't it? Here. Look at all this burning. Oh. Oh. It's making quite a nice surface as well, I think. It's just coming off. It is. It's not yeah. quite a villa yet, though, is it? No, but this is the best we've got so yeah. far. Trench 3 looks promising. We're finally making progress in our quest for a Roman villa. And Stuart may even find the mystery road linking it to the outside world, provided he can win the fight with his map. In Trench 2, we're excavating the ditch that runs round our site. We ended the day yesterday by ruling out the idea of a burial. Now, we're not quite so sure. Bridge, do you realise we've got something like six hobnails from this end of the trench now, and they've all come from this little area here? Wow, and I've got probably something like 12 to 15 from this end now. It's also coming out with a lot of cremated bone just inside the ditch edge. Louise, is it common to have sprinklings of cremated bone and hobnails in Roman ditches? It's not unusual. It's starting to sound rather like ritual. Um, certainly boots have some kind of ritual function, and we know that they use bone to mark the end of ditches. It's funny about boots, isn't it? Because they're still used today. You know, you tie them to the back of wedding cars, you find them walled up in, in houses. Yeah. Odd. So, once again, maybe not a burial, but Bridges Trench looks like it could have had some kind of strange ceremonial function. Why have you brought me out here? Well, a walk will do you good, actually. <laughs> Still convinced there's a villa here, Stuart now reckons he's discovered how it was linked to the outside world. I think, I think you'll actually like this. Put these maps together there. Now, what we've got, there's the, the River Ouse down here, and we've got Urchester over here. And if you look at this, boundary exists going across the landscape I've highlighted in yellow. You see it comes in a straight line right across, all the way across here. Our site is here, so it's directly next to it. It carries on down 
then to the Valley of the Great Ouse. And I'm convinced this is a, a Roman road coming all the way through here. It's still embodied in that trackway that we see there, which heads across the landscape to Worcester that direction. And of course, we've just got the villa in the field through there. So we actually got the site bang next to a, a major Roman routeway. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, it, it turns out that the track running alongside our site has been here for 2,000 years. Back in Trench 3, where we got excited about evidence of burning earlier on, there's no sign of any building. We're now struggling to work out where to go from here. Desperate times call for desperate measures. For the first time I can ever remember on Time Team, we've got a breakaway archaeological faction. Lloyd, who was the bloke who invited us here in the first place, thinks that we ought to be digging here. And given that our own archaeologists are flailing around <laughs> desperately, I really don't see why we shouldn't pick up on your strategy. What's going on here? Well, Tony, we know that the current archaeological society is just the latest generation of Colworth people who are interested in the archaeology here. 30 years ago, another Colworth person by the name of Tony James also took an interest in, in the field and this is Tony's son Glyn and between them they dug this rather interesting pit. And what did you find inside? The paved floor here and what looks like to be the edge of a rubbed out wall. All that's very exciting, great photos, but how do you know it's actually here? Because, you know, one bit of a field is just like any other really, isn't it? It was just from my memory of the position in the field and also aligning with two trees that I remember, the tallest tree in that group of trees there and with that particular tall one in that hedge line over there. Trees grow, don't they? They do. It's a small hole in a big field. Um, that said, it's better than anything we've got in hair trenches, isn't it? Well, have we geophysed this area? Yeah, we have. And was there anything that looked remotely like what's in those pictures? No. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, what's to lose? Small trench in here. If we can find this, I mean, how this relates to what we've got over there, I haven't got the faintest idea at the moment, but I'll give it a go. We don't usually panic this much until day three. I do sense a whiff of crisis. <laughs> so having spent two days using state-of-the-art equipment, we're now resorting to lining up a couple of trees to find a three-foot-long bit of wall discovered somewhere in this field 30 years ago. Not that we're clutching at straws. In goes Trench 4. Look like we're at the top of something, don't we? Yeah. I mean, it's a very different sort of soil here, John, from in the other trench. I mean, it's this very... Well, I, I think it could be a big pit here. Very silty. Tony, look, what's just come off the spoil tip? Oh, is this a Roman coin? Yeah, lovely little Roman coin. Back in trench one, there's been a small breakthrough. The crucial thing is that it's, it's the first coin that we've had from this particular trench or from the area of this trench, so that is the first datable evidence that, that we've got for, the, for this area. Shall I whip it up to Philippa? Not without I give it a number. All right, can't I? OK. The tide could be starting to turn, because back in Trench 4, it looks like we may have the first signs of Glynn's wall. Don't tell me the ice cream man was right. Can we get that photograph back? That's the one. You see how you've got this really big slab surface? I mean, this, if you just compare that, I'm not saying it's exactly the same stone, but it doesn't look dissimilar, does it? Well, they're both stone. <laughs> Glenn, how do these look compared to what you remember? It's very similar to the floor that I found in my test pit, so I think you're fairly close. Just a skim, please. Philippa, what do you reckon on this has just come up from uh, Phil's trench? I can tell who the emperor is. It says Constans on there. And that can actually be dated to just one year. Which is? 347 to 348. So where does that go in your pile? It fits just here. Well, you've got a lot of coins in that area, haven't you? Yeah, there are quite a lot from the period 330 to 348, but if you look over here, there's loads more. We've got huge numbers from the late 3rd century. Yes, it really tells a vivid story, doesn't it? Right through from the beginning of the Roman Empire, all through the 100s and the 200s, there's virtually nothing, and then suddenly it really spikes, and, and there's a, a real coin presence right until the end of the Roman Empire. And this is a really exciting profile because even if you can't find a villa outside, we've definitely got one here on the table because this is a typical profile for a Roman villa. 
which makes it all the more mystifying that we can't find it in our field. Though Phil has been getting even more broken tiles in his trench, all we need now is a building. What you got there, guys? We've got an inscribed tile here that came out of this trench. Um, a few letters I, G, possibly an L and a V. What do you think it might mean? It could be the name of somebody, the person who was writing this. It could be some kind of mark from the tile person to say how many tiles he was making or where they were due to go. But just on four letters, it's a bit hard to tell. I mean, you know as well as I do, if you see a bed of new laid concrete, somehow or another, mm. you've got a right in it. Yeah. <laughs> Have you just about finished that trench now? Pretty much. Good story. Cracking piece of archaeology. We have a building. We have land divisions and everything else. Look, we've got a ditch running through there, and we've got a ditch running through there, so we've actually got this area of the field segmented off. And set in the angle of these two ditches, you've got what I think is the end wall of a building, and joining that building to that ditch, we've got an overflow drain that comes down through there. Well, it's a great little piece of archaeology for a very small area. So what kind of building do you think it would have been? I think it's a timber frame building. I think that, that slot is actually a beam slot to take the base of a timber frame building. I think the walls would have been made of clay. And then a roof, you can have a tiled roof. We got tiles off this side. So I think we've got a perfectly good building here within a ditch sort of land division. Can you give any kind of date for it? No, but you can because I gave you a coin this morning that came off the spoil tip. You did, didn't you? 348 AD. See, you knew the answer all along, didn't you? <laughs> so what are you going to do now? Basically, basically record it, close it down. It's been cracking, though. Fantastic. On a site where we're looking for a grand multi-roomed villa, we've found the tool shed. Well, it's a start. Back in Bridges Trench, the finds are now looking less ritual and more every day. Well, to be honest, I have seen things like this before on the uh, hardware counter of my local <laughs> shop. Um, I mean, I think, I think you're right, it is quite hinge-like, mm. um, but I'm thinking more um, furniture hinge rather than yes. something like a buckle plate, so that there are no notches in mm. the corners for, for a buckle. So from this area here, we've now had the hobnails, we've now had the animal <laughs> bone, we've now had the cremated bone. I, I feel as though we're... Um... All human life is here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, this yeah. is the rubbish tip of the site, potentially. <laughs> it may be the rubbish tip, but it's selling us all about how they lived. I'm tempted to say a rubbish tip sums up this dig. We've had tantalising glimpses of the people who were once here, but it's so frustrating that we still can't find the place they were living in. Neil came bouncing up to me at lunchtime and he said, Tony, you know those 30-year-old photos of that lost stonework? Well, we've put a trench in, not exactly where Lloyd's friend said, because we had some geophysics results which meant that it looked like we got a better target a little bit further over. But it's great because we're down on the money, we've found the missing stonework. Haven't we, Neil? Uh, no, 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 we haven't, Tony. Um, the, the stones you see there, I thought look very much like those stones there. Yeah. But the more we've exposed, where Phil's digging now, it gets more and more random. We've exposed it up there, it looks more like stones rather than a surface. I we don't think I've ever seen so much random stone in one trench. And we can't find the wall that Glyn found in his trench. Lloyd, come here, you brought us here. What's gone wrong? I don't think anything's gone wrong, Tony. We've found an awful lot. I think the problem is he's making sense of it all. Well, yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to try and prove this one way or the other. Where is this stone building? I mean, I know you, I've given you... I mean, a bit of a false prophet. I've given you excitement, I've let you down, but we are close to it. Now, I'm thinking that we're going to go further that way. If it comes to it, we'll go further this way. And if it comes to it, we'll go further that way. You know, by well, that's end... pretty scientific, isn't it? Well, why not? You know, what else have we got to go on? Lloyd, bring all your knowledge as an ice cream man to bear on this site. Which direction would you go in? That direction, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so, once again, relying on local expertise, Neil's extending Trench 4 to try and locate Glyn's wall. It's 4pm on day two, and we're still nowhere near finding this villa. In trench one, we've got some sort of wooden shed from the fourth century. Trench two is a rubbish tip full of hobnails and bits of old furniture. In trench three, all we've got are broken tiles, a load of stones and evidence of burning. 
And in trench four, where we're trying to find one of the villa walls, nothing. We've reached crisis point. Time for a council of war. What we know is that there is a stone building, or at least a stone part of a building, on this site that had a hypercaust. Yeah, but that's not much to know in two days, is it? It's like we haven't got anything tangible at all. Well, I think we have. I mean, we've clearly defined this enclosure now. And on day one, I said, I hoped that we'd get noise, as I call it, in the magnet. Yeah, all right, you've got noise, but no structures at all. No, and that is the whole issue. We can't see the structures with the radar and with the res. And so, to me, it says one of three things. It's ploughed out totally, we haven't gone down deep enough, or, as Neil says, we've only got a small stone building and the rest of it is timber-framed. We've certainly got timber buildings, Tony. We're fillies, we've got clear evidence of timber structures. So maybe we're wrong to be thinking a monumental stone structure. Maybe we've got a series of timber buildings, one of which had a stone room to it. Let's extend that trench in both directions. Let's prove once and for all, is there a stone structure in this area? While we extend trench three, John looks like he's had enough. He's moved away from all the confusion to Geophys, an area further down the field, and I don't blame him. It's the end of day two, and we've had one setback after another. But there have been two exciting last-minute developments. First, this area of burning in Trench 3. Could that be part of the central heating system inside a Roman villa? And what about this intriguing circular thing. Is this Roman or could it be something to do with the Iron Age and part of the reason why this whole site's here at all? We'll find out tomorrow. Beginning of day three of our really frustrating search for a, a Roman villa here in Bedford and if things weren't difficult enough half of us have now gone down with hay fever. But last night Neil showed us two little glimmers of hope. The first one was this patch of burning down here, which he thought might be evidence of a hypercourse, the central heating system, which would be at the heart of a Roman villa. Neil, if you can hear me properly, <laughs> is it? No. Um, what it is is a feature full of smashed up tile. This is directly underneath the, the fine scatter on the surface, so it explains that. But can you see it's curving round to where Kerry is and then back to where Matt is? It's like a C shape. Question is, Where's all this tile coming from? That's a real conundrum. All right, it's really intriguing, but it's certainly not the villa. The other thing that got you excited was that little circle that was on the geophys. Yeah, I mean, here it is at the top end of the site. What might it be? Well, I think there's two possibilities. One is it could be a sort of little circular Roman shrine, you know, a little religious place. Or possibly it's not even Roman at all. It could be pre-Roman, perhaps an Iron Age roundhouse or something. It's going to be the classic, classic question, you know, what can we do in the time available? But the first thing is, answer this, got to get that trench open and then see how we go. Number three, find my villa. <laughs> so while we continue digging trench three to work out what Neil's C-shaped structure is, we're opening a fifth trench. If John's circular feature is a Roman shrine, we should find a central altar with ritual offerings like coins. If it's a much older roundhouse, it'll have bits of Iron Age pottery and circular holes for wooden posts. I'm not expecting a, a monumental structure. Everybody else is. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, pretty quickly we're starting to get fines. The dark and the light. That's Roman there, look. Yeah. A little bit of a rim, look. Just turning over a little plain rim. Well, let's pull back again, then, Ian. This stuff is repulsive. If I'd known how nasty it was, I wouldn't have come back to help. <laughs> In Bridges Trench, though, the mud is the least of our troubles, certainly compared to working out what the archaeology is doing. What are you thinking? Well, uh... What seems to be happening is we've got two sort of distinct phases going mm -hmm. on. So we've got that dark material there that you've been digging, and that seems to be consistently bringing out pottery of that third, fourth century date. And then, can you see that area just along there? The yellow. That's it. Mm. I mean, that's where we were getting the cremated bone from yesterday, the hobnails, and the pottery seems to be sort of really going back about 100 years. We seem to be having a start date of about the second century. So, when do you think the ditch was dug? Well, 
At the moment, I would put my money on it being dug about the third century. Oh, as late as that? Yeah. But what's really nice is that we seem to be starting to get evidence of what's actually going on inside the enclosure, beside right. the ditch. This corner is a great one to look in. The little circular patch here, yeah. that is looking very typical of a small post hole. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking wooden structures? Well, they, that would be typical of wooden structures, small structures, something that could be associated with small settlement or something to do with industry and outbuildings. Bridges Trench sums up this dig. On day one, it looked like a burial, then it wasn't. Yesterday, it changed to a rubbish tip. And now she's got wooden workshops. And this is the same field where all the evidence told us we should be finding a huge Roman villa. Back over in Matt's trench, the signs are looking, dare I say it, promising. They've done a good job cleaning up around this area of burning, haven't they? They have, quite very clearly now. I think you can see where the tiles are coming around in an arc from where Matt is. Coming out here, comes down here, I think it ends there, back up in a straight line there, and then back round. And do you know what I think, Tony? This looks to me like a classic tile kiln, a place where they're actually making the tiles, with Matt in where the fire is, the hot gas is coming round, and a floor on the top, and all your tiles piled up above it. So rather than having a villa, we might actually have a factory. I mean, that'd be ironic, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> But Matt, how's it looking in there? Well, if it's a kiln, it's a very well-made kiln. I mean, look at that stonework. Oh, yeah. Does that look familiar to you? Yeah, it's a very similar construction, isn't it? Yeah, we've got three courses of nicely faced stones there. They're coming down, and they've, they've got a corner as well coming back. Mm. These are the photos that were taken 30 years ago? Yes. It could be the stoke hole, but I mean, it doesn't look very burnt to me. No. The problem I've got is the magnetic responses don't say kiln. Really? They're not strong enough. There's clearly a lot of burning going on, and that's reflected by the magnetism. Could we not be looking at an apsidal end of a building that's been robbed out and filled in with tile? When you say an apsidal end, that's the little bubbly bit at the end of a Roman villa. Absolutely. And I wonder, could that be the corner of the building? After having been frustrated <laughs> for two days, at least I'm vaguely excited, now we've got something that looks like a wall. This is a bit more like it. Neil thinks we've got a flue leading into a kiln used to fire terracotta tiles, while John thinks we've got the curved end of a villa building. So we still don't know what we've got. There's only one way to find out who's right. Extend the trench. Well, it's under there somewhere. <laughs> oh, there's a good edge here, John. There is a good edge there. What it's an edge of. <laughs> That's fine, it. Fine. Look, I, I'm not disputing the fact we're looking at something industrial, yeah. small scale and so on, but we, we've not got an intact, fired structure. No, that's true. I mean, it's strange why this is not scorched, isn't it, these stones? I mean, that is, that is hard to explain. You've got something nice. Fabulous. Hey, looks like my a, goodness. Yeah, it looks like a jet <laughs> ring. Oh, wow. We'd been thinking Bridges Trench was on the site of the local Roman car boot sale, but now it looks more like the Antiques Roadshow. It's got that, uh, kind of like a fake gemstone on it. I'm just thinking what, what date... Um, those rings that have the, the gemstones that are flush with the surface, mm. people say first, second century, but mm. sticking up proud like this, I'm not sure. I think I need to see it clean. But anyway. whatever date it is, we love it. I know. Exactly. <laughs> As girls, we love our jewellery, don't and we? And it would definitely be anyone's family heirloom, wouldn't it? It would, it would. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's fantastic news over in Phil's trench. He thinks he's found a large building with exciting signs of the people who once lived inside it. There's just one problem, it's pre-Roman. We think it might be a roundhouse. Okay. So what we've done is we've put a trench across there. Where Tracy is here, you can see there's this big black blob. It's far stronger on this side, and that is confirmed. You can see it's a lot darker here. Yep. So we're now we're coming into where we think the middle of the roundhouse would be. This darkness here is, is, is the debris of the occupation. And as you get to the other end of the roundhouse, you can see that the ditch is there, but it's far less clear. Look, you can just see it faintly coming up there. And that's confirmed on the geophysics. It's nowhere near as strong. Now, we have started to get phones. Okay. 
And this sort of stuff here, I don't have any problem with. That's bulk standard Roman, as far as I know. Yeah, happy with that. I mean, these are little fine drinking vessels. Uh, that's probably a little cup or a beaker, something like that. We're well into the Roman with those. Now, the stuff that I was more interested in, which we've started to get, is what's this stuff? Oh, right. Mm, the contrast is huge, isn't it? This, it's a little bit grotty, isn't it, to tell the truth? I... <sighs> Do you know, I think you're you're in the Iron Age with this stuff. Yes! <laughs> I think you're well in the Iron Age. <laughs> Brilliant. It's nasty, but in this context, if you're looking for a roundhouse, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you're after. It is not nasty. It is <laughs> gem material. <laughs> Beautiful! <laughs> yes, terrific. It's just a shame we can't find the one building we came here for. And the fact that we've opened yet another trench doesn't exactly inspire me with confidence. It's gone in next door to Trench 3, where Neil and John were arguing over whether they had a kiln or our missing villa building. So which is it? It's looking more like a building now, Tony, for one simple reason. Those stones where Matt's digging, they're not burnt at all. Now, if this was a firebox of a kiln, there'd be really intense heat, they'd be scorched red. No evidence of burning whatsoever. So maybe what we've got, Tony, is like you said, a little absidal bubble end, comes out, steps out where Max's hand is. Now, look, come back this way. Yeah. In this new trench, we've now got this really fine mortar floor, which Helen's been exposing. Yeah. And then we've got, look, artefacts. Samian wine cup. Hardly seen that at all on this site. So that would be something that someone with fairly high status would drink out of, wouldn't it? Yeah, this is where people are living, not just working, they're yeah. actually living. Keep coming back. Oh, we've got a wall, haven't we? Well, I hope so. Got a very clear edge across here. Lots of infill. If we're lucky, get some of this out. Rob a trench, back wall the house. And then look what else what we've got here. This really nice, very fine little glass wine goblet. Again, late Roman, quite high status. Unlike anything else we've seen on the site so far. So it looks more likely it could be a villa. It does, but give me another hour. We've only got two left. So finally, we've decided there's a curving wall of a building in Matt's trench, and next door in the new trench we've just opened, there's a mortared floor and the back wall of what we think is a high-status room. Well, it's starting to look like a villa, just not with the fancy mosaics and wall plaster we'd expected. The luster, sort of the shine, yeah. is incredible on this ring. It's just so beautiful. Over in the fines tent, the girls are being, well, a bit girly. Um, what type of person would have owned it? That kind of jet ring was only worn by women, um, and only by women in Britain. For one thing, it would have been saying she was a woman of some means, mm. but also it would have been saying, or seems to have been saying, she was a woman of childbearing age. Right. Uh, because they seem, from burials, only to be found with women within that age group. So this would be a real display of mm. her her status and yeah. also what role she's playing in the society yeah. that she's living. Do you know what? If it wasn't so fragile, I think I'd be tempted to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the chaos everywhere else, Phil can at least confirm the story in Trench 5. We are now standing in the middle of an Iron Age roundhouse. And it extends from where Tracy is. I mean, she's pretty much on the wall line, about four metres radius, going round there and then back in front of where Mike is. Now, have a look at the section here. You see these cobbled surfaces here? Those are actually stones that have been laid down to actually make the floor of the roundhouse. This is the surface on which the Iron Age people would have walked. So how does all this relate to our Roman stuff? We have actually got continuity. People living on the same site for literally hundreds, if not thousands of years. The first people that came here were the Iron Age people. And they would have had the chance to put their fields in there, their droveways, and they would have actually had a whole landscape here, which the Romans would then have adapted when they built their houses here. Houses? What do you mean houses? A couple of rooms, maybe, but that's about it. It's five o'clock on our final day, and for some reason, we seem to be extending Trench 4, where yesterday we failed to find Glyn's wall. Neil and Ben are looking anxious. Oh, you know, there's certainly material coming through here. What are you doing over here? Last minute, five to midnight hunch. I just wondered whether this yellow bonded material here 
is the same as the core of the wall that Matt's been finding. And if it is, then, you know, this is a much bigger building than we've perhaps we've been thinking of so far. The key to it, as well as the facing stones, is this clay. This is redeposited clay, and I think they're using this to set the stones into. Give me 10 minutes, I'll get Ian in, just pull a bit more of this back, and we'll know one with the other. You've been saying that for the best part of three days. <laughs> OK. 10 minutes. 10 that's minutes. So in a final effort, Neil has extended Trench 4 to find a wall line that he hopes will link up with the apse in Trench 3. All eyes are now on Ben and Neil to see if they can finally locate this elusive villa. Well, Ben, this has been a bit of a frantic last-minute exercise. I mean, what do you, what do you think we've got? I, I think we've got it. I think the key to it is this yellow clay. I think it's a bedding material. I think they've laid this down to create a platform and put the building on top. The fact this is so similar to the material that Matt's getting exactly. over there does suggest that we are dealing with the same structure, doesn't it? And, you know, we always thought it was quite small to start with, but as it's gone on, it's got kind of bigger, and it's actually quite a respectable size now, isn't it, really? Well, this is quite a spread of material here, isn't it, now? We're looking at something big and rectangular. Our time is up. So, has it all been worthwhile? Neil, it's quarter to six, day three. Have we got a villa? Yes, we have. Quite a respectable one as well. About 20 metres long, tiled roof, stone walls. Perfectly respectable villa. And respectable's right. Rather than the grand multi-roomed villa we'd expected, we found a modest country house instead. After three days of agony, we've got the stone wall of a timber-framed building with an apse at one end. Inside that, a dining room with a mortared floor. And next door, a wooden outhouse, all built in the late Roman period on a site where people had already been living for hundreds if not thousands of years. Lloyd, it's been such a helter-skelter, hasn't it? I bet you thought we'd just come in, dig some stuff up and dust it off for you. Well, we knew it was a complicated site, Tony, so it's just a case of bringing all the ideas together. Helen, we've had so many smart archaeologists around, <laughs> and yet the amount of time it took to evaluate what was here was enormous. I know, it's, it seems to have gone at breakneck speed today, but I think what it's reminded us is how difficult it is to, to reconcile topsoil archaeology, topsoil finds, with what's underneath. Lloyd, as a final present for you, for you to play with after we've left, John's still been beavering away, doing his geophys, and he's just turned up, look, some more Roman buildings here. <laughs> That's marvellous, Tony. Thank you very much. <laughs> but do us a favour, don't ask us to come back and dig it for you. 